Have you ever traveled on a ship before? Well, I have. And what impressed me most was the precision the crew was working with. Each crew member is fulfilling his duties and is strictly following the captain's orders. But imagine the following situation. Knowing how difficult life at sea is and how tired the sailors can get, the captain may turn a blind eye to some small and insignificant weaknesses. We're only human after all, aren't we? And what's the big deal if a deck officer takes his girlfriend with him to shorten a hard day's night? Another sailor has serious sight problems, but he's a good chap, he's one of us anyway. And the captain himself, well, he's got his own weaknesses as well. Just boozing out a bit, not much. It's just that if the captain boozes out secretly every now and then, so will the sailors, when no one can see them either. And what do you think would happen to this vessel? Exactly, this will happen. And who is to be held accountable for the wreckage and for the human lives? That's right, the captain, because he's in charge for the ship and the crew. And he is responsible for everyone's safety. Things are the same in a public institution. The manager is just like the captain, in charge of everything that's going on in the institution. By own example, the manager sets a trend of respecting or breaching rules and laws in the public institution he manages. If a manager has hidden interest, no matter how hard he tries to hide it, his employees will find out anyway and at their turn they'll have them tenfold. If the manager doesn't hire employees based on merit, but rather on friends' requests or an influential person's recommendations, tolerates employees who are closely related to work in each other's direct subordination, receives gifts and doesn't declare them, gives illegal orders to his subordinates, doesn't reply to citizens' request of access to information of public interest, doesn't manage efficiently the resources of the institution, etc., etc., corruption will flourish in this institution. This is exactly why the manager of a public institution is obliged by law to have zero tolerance towards integrity breaches. And this means that the manager of a public entity is obliged to be an example worth following for his employees in terms of observing integrity requirements and public interest to impose disciplinary sanctions to the employees breaching integrity requirements to notify the NAC or, if the case, the NIA about integrity requirements violations amounting to criminal and administrative offences. Meanwhile, the public agent is obliged to reject attempts of getting involved into breaching integrity requirements, unacceptable present, undue influences, corruption acts, etc. Report such attempts. Integrity of a public institution is unimaginable without a manager with integrity. Because only such a manager has the moral right and the courage to demand integrity from the employees and otherwise to sanction them. Remember, integrity is freedom. <laughs>